If you ever get sick and you don't have insurance, you have two options. You can either go completely broke or uh, fucking die. That's just the sad reality of this grotesque postmodern dystopia that we're living in. But luckily, there is another option. If you wake up in the emergency room one day and see that you have an $87 million bill, you can always turn to GoFundMe. And if you're somehow unfamiliar with what GoFundMe is, it's a website that essentially crowdsources your trauma. So if you fall down the stairs and break every bone in your body, or God forbid a loved one unexpectedly gets hit by a bus, GoFundMe is the number one place to alleviate some of that financial burden. But listen, people out here aren't just gonna give up their money to anybody with a sad story, okay? Everybody's got a sad story these days. You gotta remember, when you start a GoFundMe, you are at the mercy of strangers. So you gotta sell that shit. You gotta tug people's heartstrings. The sadder the story, the better. Because the sad reality is, people live and die based on if a GoFundMe goes viral or not. And the sadder reality is, a lot of people are willing to exploit this. And that's what this video is about, the biggest frauds, scammers, and degenerates on GoFundMe. You can find all sorts of stuff on GoFundMe, from kids with leukemia, to homeless people trying to get back on their feet, to my dumbass Facebook friend Crystal who was trying to get people to donate to her trip to Finland. Bitch, if you need to crowdsource your vacation, maybe you should stay at home. If I'm gonna donate to anyone on this website, it's gonna be a homeless, crack addicted, autistic baby with AIDS. Sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked, but the point I'm trying to make is there is a lot of stupid GoFundMes out there, and I think it would be fun to talk about some of them before this video gets really dark. Let's see, first we got a woman who's using her children as props to fund her boob job. Girl just trying to make it up the trailer park, I guess. Next, we got the frat boy who trashed an Airbnb and tried to crowdsource to pay for the damages. Hey y'all, it's me, Brayden here. So the brothers at Delta Gamma Nu rented a nice Airbnb in the Hamptons for New Year's Eve. And to say the least, things got out of control. Now we owe the landlord 5,000 in damages. It's moments like these when the community can really come together and help each other out. So we made a GoFundMe page to help raise the money. Oh, damn bro, I, I used to be in a frat. I really hope I didn't act like that. I probably did. And next we got what I think is not just the dumbest GoFundMe in history, but possibly one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. Somebody actually made a GoFundMe called Let's Get Kylie Jenner to a Billion. I guess this was back when she had $900 million and they wanted her to be a billionaire. This actually made me physically ill. I really hope that this is a joke or something, but the possibility that it's real is making me depressed. From December 22nd, 2018 until January 25th, 2019 was the longest government shutdown in US history at 35 days. The reason for the shutdown is that President Trump really wanted to build that wall. Build that wall, 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 build that wall. He wanted $5.7 billion to build the wall and Democrats gave him a counter offer of zero dollars unable to agree the whole government shut down for 35 days straight it was pretty obvious that this wall wasn't going to get built so one man decided to take matters into his own hands in december of 2018 an iraq war veteran named brian colfage created a gofundme with the extremely ambitious goal of one billion dollars and the only reason he set it to a billion was because that was the maximum amount that you could do on gofundme he originally wanted it to be five billion in the first three days alone, they already raised $7 million. And after six months, that number increased to 25 million from 300,000 donors, making it the most successful GoFundMe in history. But it was still a long ways away from the $1 billion goal. So Colfage decided to shut it down and instead create a nonprofit called We Build the Wall Inc., along with former Trump advisor Steve Bannon. The people who donated to the GoFundMe now had a choice. They could either opt in to redirecting the funds from the GoFundMe to this new nonprofit, or they could get a full refund. Most people chose not to get a refund and gave their money to Colfage's new nonprofit. So now our boys Colfage and Bannon had tens of millions of dollars at their disposal. It was finally time to build that wall. And the crazy mother suckers actually did it. Kind of. 
They started building a portion of it in New Mexico and put up about half a mile of it before being ordered to stop by the local government. A New Mexico mayor says a private group that started building part of a U.S.-Mexico border wall has been ordered to stop. The group, named We Build the Wall, started building the structure without authority or any building permits from the city. Okay, a little bit of a setback, but they also built another 3.5 mile section in Texas, which is currently in danger of falling apart. See, the Schlemiels who built it put it too close to the Rio Grande River. According to civil engineers, when the river rises, it will likely attack those areas where the foundation is exposed, further weakening the support of the fence and potentially causing portions to fall into the Rio Grande. Even Donald Trump himself was pissed off this wall. He tweeted, I disagree with doing this very small, tiny section of the wall in a tricky area by a private group which raised money by ads. It was only done to make me look bad and perhaps now it doesn't even work. Clearly things weren't going according to plan, but hey, at least something was being done. And the donations kept coming in because despite a rocky start, people still trusted Colfage. He was a true patriot who wanted nothing more than to keep his country safe. I mean, the guy wasn't even paying himself. On the We Build the Wall website, Colfage clearly states, I will personally not take a penny of compensations from these donations. And to his credit, the dude was true to his word. He did not take a penny. He took $350,000 and he wasn't the only one. Steve Bannon also took hundreds of thousands for himself. Basically, Bannon ran donations through a network of shell companies and nonprofits to make it look legit. Then he deposited the money directly in their bank accounts as payments, classic money laundering stuff. And our boy Ryan Colfage was living it up in Miami. He allegedly used those funds to buy a white Range Rover and a boat with like 37 Trump flags on it. And listen, you can't really blame the guy, okay? Because his wife is Insta Thought and OnlyFans model Ashley Colfage. So I've only squirted one time, and okay. it was with this one dude. And I'm like, did I? So I was mortified. Okay, I thought yes, I peed on him. Bro, this is a real clip of this man's wife. So it's starting to make a lot more sense now. It's hard to hold down a woman like that with only one arm. It's just funny because Brian was trying to put out this conservative family man war hero image meanwhile his wife is going on instagram talking about squirting on other dudes you just you love to see it anyways it wouldn't be long before multiple members of the nonprofit were charged with tax fraud wire fraud and money laundering luckily steve bannon would get a nice presidential pardon and get off scot-free but our boy brian wouldn't be so lucky prosecutors wanted his ass at first he denied all the charges and made a post on instagram saying this quote corrupt assholes coming for anyone that supported Trump at a high level. They want to shut us up and keep us from building more wall. His wife also made a post saying she wasn't worried because they knew the truth. But pretty soon, Brian started changing his tune, later making a statement saying, I induced donors to opt to the new project in part through the misrepresentation that I would not take a profit from We Build the Wall or take a salary or compensation. I knowingly and willingly conspired to receive money from the donations. Now, as of today, he still has yet to be sentenced and uh, we don't know what's gonna happen to him, but I'm pretty sure he was pissed when Trump didn't pardon him. And I'm sorry, I, I hate to keep bringing up this dude's wife because it, it doesn't really have anything to do with this, but this is the last TikTok she posted. I don't trust these hoes. Up until then, I'm gonna fuck my exes. But if I feel rally, just check my DMs, fill my gas list. If you know anything about Young Gravy, you know bro's going through it right now. Like, I almost feel sorry for this guy because he's such a schlemiel, but let's move on. Guys, there's a ton of important stuff on your web browser, okay? Personally, I have addresses, names, phone numbers, credit cards, your mom's phone number, a lot of really important data stored in my web browser. So best believe I wanna protect that shit with my life. That's why I partnered with Guardio. Guardio is a browser extension for Chrome and Microsoft Edge, and it's kinda like a bodyguard for your web browser, okay? It blocks any malicious nonsense before it reaches your computer. After you install Guardio, it runs a scan that'll detect any existing threats on your browser. And I promise you'll be surprised by what it finds. After that, you'll get a free seven day trial to remove these threats and enable real time protection. And if I know my fans, I know you guys are looking at some sketchy stuff on the internet, so you gotta get on this ASAP. Guardio can detect and block phishing attempts no matter the source of it. Email, Google, social media, a certain website with the initials PH. Oh, and not only that, it also blocks harmful websites, malware, and dangerous downloads. 
Don't trust Google or Microsoft to keep your browsing data safe. Are you freaking kidding me, those schmucks? And you, you can't even trust two-factor authentication anymore, okay? Linux tech tips. One of the biggest channels on YouTube just had his channel hijacked by some crypto scam, okay? And Linus Tech, he, he's a smart guy, but I'm smarter because I use Guard IO, so that wouldn't happen to me. As a matter of fact, they actually researched this specific crypto scam a few months before Linus fell for it, and they're the only ones to detect and block the malware which caused it. So guys, go and get Guardio right now and protect yourself online. Never be scammed by a Nigerian prince ever again. Right now you can get Guardio for you and four additional family members at no extra cost and 20% off your monthly subscription. Just go to guard.io slash Dantavius or click the link in the description. Again, that's guard.io slash Dantavius or the link in the description. Thank you Guardio for supporting me in these difficult times. Now let's get back to the video. <laughs> The worst mother of the year award goes to my ex-wife, but this woman is a close second. In 2016, Blake Morrison was diagnosed with an aggressive form of leukemia and the doctors didn't give him long to live. Blake made a list of things he wanted to do before he got sick, but Victoria wasn't exactly rolling in dough. So she started a GoFundMe for her son called Blake's Bucket List. She quickly met her goal of $1,000 but unfortunately Blake didn't make it. Just a few months after the GoFundMe was posted, Victoria posted on Facebook that Blake passed away and that he was cremated, which was news to Blake who was very much alive and very much not sick with leukemia. Now, to be fair, Blake did have some kind of disease at one point, it might've been leukemia, I don't know, but doctors caught it early and by the time of his death, he was completely free of it. But that didn't stop his mom from cashing in on the sympathy of having a sick kid. She had convinced everyone around her from friends to family to teachers to Blake himself that he was terminally ill and at death's door. Classic case of Munchausen by proxy. When police found out about her little scheme, she was arrested for child neglect and later sentenced to five years in prison. And I just gotta say, this has got to be one of the stupidest human beings in history. How did you expect to get away with faking your son's death? Okay, she even staged a mock funeral for him. And after going through all that effort, she only asked for a thousand dollars on GoFundMe? If you're gonna commit fraud, go big or go home. Speaking of terrible mothers, on Thursday, November 17th, 2017, George Young came home after a long shift working as a security guard. He had been working extra hours lately because his wife Tia recently lost her job. At around midnight, Tia, who was sleeping upstairs, awoke to the sound of gunshots. When she went downstairs to see what happened, her brother was already down there. He told her to call 911. George had been shot. What was Tia gonna do now? She didn't have enough money to put food on the table, let alone plan a funeral. So her friend Candace set up a GoFundMe for her. Since news of his passing and with no employment, Tia is now left to figure out how her family will eat, how she will provide for their boys, and how she will bury her husband of 22 years. Tia's life was in shambles. She was a widow, she was broke, and worst of all, her husband's killer was still at large. Luckily, the police were looking into it and it only took them a few weeks to figure out who took her husband off the census. To her shock, it was somebody she knew very well. It was somebody close to her. It was her. Well, her and her brother. Remember the same brother that discovered George's body? Well, it turns out Tia might have been from Alabama or some shit because uh, she was banging this dude. And it also turns out that George had a $1 million life insurance policy. I think you can put two and two together and figure out what happened. You know, I hate to sound misogynistic, but uh, this really reminds me of that famous quote from Abraham Lincoln, bitches be crazy. Debbie Crankin, yes that is her real name, is a transgender singer and TikTok influencer. She created a GoFundMe to help raise money for her male to female transition, and a lot of people on TikTok were very supportive of her and shared the GoFundMe around. The fundraiser was a huge success. Well, at least by any normal human being standards, but Debbie must have been cranking that crack pipe because she posted this message on GoFundMe. My campaign is not receiving any donations. I'm urging everyone who is still receiving my messages to donate to my campaign again and share it across your social media platforms as much as you can today. I don't understand why people are ignoring me and why it has been so hard for me to reach the full goal for my fundraising campaign. This is totally ridiculous 
and unacceptable. Keep in mind that at this point, she had raised over $70,000 and her attitude was starting to get people suspicious about her intentions. Multiple TikTokers started coming out and expressing their suspicions about Debbie, but another transgender TikToker named Zaya Persian would really expose the shit out of her. If you click the link in her bio, you can see that she has two GoFundMes, right? Wrong. She actually has nine GoFundMes. Nine. Nine! This is on the GoFundMe app. If you add the totals of all nine of her GoFundMes, she has raised over $350,000. This one by itself has like $140,000. By the way, $350,000 is more than enough for at least three different people to fully transition. The real reason Debbie feels like she doesn't have enough money is because she used money from the GoFundMe to get a luxury apartment in Beverly Hills that is over $3,000 a month. She's asking for $10,000 for furniture, and she put $7,000 down on an Audi A5. After this bombshell dropped, everybody turned on Debbie. There was even a change.org petition called Deplatform Scammer Debbie Crankin that received 1,700 signatures. Well, this must have been the world's first change.org petition that actually did something, because as of filming, it looks like all of Debbie's GoFundMe campaigns have been taken down. And I think her original TikTok was deleted as well. But she has a new account now, and look at this shit. She still has Cash App and PayPal links to donate to her transition. This woman truly has no shame. Oh, and another funny detail is she has a song called Parasite, which is so ironic that it makes me think I'm living in a simulation. Kate McClure was on the highway in Philadelphia one night when she noticed that she was out of gas. Kate, being the silly goose that she is, forgot her wallet at home. So she continued driving, hoping that she had enough in the tank to make it back home. And when she was just three miles away from her house, her car gives out and she gets stuck on the side of the road. Her phone was dead too, so she couldn't even call for help. At this point, Kate thought she was gonna die. And I know that might sound kind of dramatic, but hey, you try getting stuck in Philadelphia after dark, you'd probably think the same thing. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she sees a figure. He starts walking towards her car. This was it, she thought. It hadn't even been five minutes and Kate was already done for. So she said her prayers, closed her eyes, and accepted the inevitable fact that she was probably about to be chopped up into multiple pieces. But to her surprise, the man simply asked if she needed some help. After recovering from the shock, Kate told the man that she ran out of gas and was stuck. He told her to get back in her car and lock the doors, and he would be back in a few minutes. After a few minutes, true to his word, the man came back. He had a gas can in his right hand. Kate was saved. He was ecstatic. She gave the man a hug and asked for his name. He said his name was Johnny Babbitt, and it turns out Johnny was an Iraq war veteran who fell into drug addiction, and he had spent his last $20 to get Kate some gas. Money he could have used to have a meal, or better yet, a delicious bottle of Mad Dog 2020. When Kate got home, she told her boyfriend Mark all about the absolute saint that helped her out. So Mark decided he wanted to do something nice for the guy. He drove back to the place where Kate's car broke down, found Johnny and gave the bloke $100 and a bottle of Mad Dog 2020. From there, the three became good friends with Mark and Kate regularly visiting Johnny, but they wanted to do something more for the guy. So on November 10th, 2017, Kate started a GoFundMe with the name Paying It Forward with the goal of $10,000 to help get Johnny back on his feet. The description read, I am raising money for Johnny. With the money, I would like to get him first and last month's rent at an apartment, a reliable vehicle, and four to six months worth of expenses. He is very interested in finding a job, and I believe that with a place to be able to clean up every night and get a good night's rest, his life can get back to being normal. Truly, I believe that all Johnny needs is one little break. Hopefully, with your help, I can be the one to give it to him. Within a few weeks, the fundraiser blasted past the 10K and raised close to $300,000 in less than two weeks. When the story got picked up by the local news, even more money started pouring in. But Johnny decided to end the fundraiser because he already had more than what he needed. The final amount was just over $400,000 raised by 14,000 people. From there, it went from being a heartwarming local story to national news. Kate and Johnny even did an interview for Good Morning America together. Wasn't expecting anything in return. Me and my boyfriend Mark went back the next day. He gave him $100. I was ecstatic. What if we started a GoFundMe for this guy? We set it up in the car on the way home. Less than a week ago, Johnny was sleeping under a bridge. Today, he's been given what he calls a second chance. When asked what he wanted to do with the money, Johnny Babbitt responded that, this money was given to help me. Why not help other people in similar situations or people that are actively helping other people in different situations? 
Everybody out there is facing some kind of struggle. So if I can touch their life the way mine was touched, it'd be an amazing feeling. Wow. What a heartwarming story. But hey, remember the video you're watching. This story does not have a happy ending. Mark D'Amico, Kate's boyfriend, was the one handling the funds because he was afraid Johnny would blow it all on drugs. But then things started to get a little bit weird. Lavish trips, shopping sprees, and gambling. The two celebrated New Year's Eve in Las Vegas. They partied atop the Delano Hotel at Skyfall. They took helicopter rides through the Grand Canyon and gambled. The floor was all smiles with shopping bags in hand. And we couldn't help but notice the very expensive Louis Vuitton handbag she began to sport on her arm. God damn, man. Number one rule. If you're going to embezzle funds, don't fucking post it on Facebook. What is what is up with people self snitching? Mark was supposed to set up a trust for Johnny and also buy him a house, a truck and pay for rehab. Instead, he bought a trailer and a shitty truck in his name and pretty much forced Johnny to live on their property. Kate also happened to buy herself a brand new BMW. Don't know if uh, that happens to be a coincidence. And after a while, Johnny got fed up with this and sued the couple to try and get some of the money back. But it turns out they already spent it all. At this point, the police lodged the criminal investigation into Mark and Kate and raided their house for evidence, even confiscating their BMW. And during the investigation, the real truth came out. It turns out the whole thing was a big scheme. The story about Johnny coming out of nowhere to save Kate, it was all bullshit. All three of them were in on it. Well, kind of. Babbitt didn't find out about the scheme until after the GoFundMe had already been created. Kate offered him $25,000 to keep his mouth shut and he agreed. But none of them had any idea just how insane this whole thing would become. The fraud was discovered after police searched Kate's phone and found texts where she was bragging about the scam, including one that said, Okay, so wait, the gas part is completely made up, but the guy isn't. I had to make something up to make people feel bad. When it was all said and done, Kate pled guilty and was sentenced to three years in prison. Mark D'Amico was sentenced to five years, and Johnny himself also pled guilty and got five years probation with mandatory drug counseling. Just goes to show you, never trust people from New Jersey. Next up, we got another psychopath from New Jersey. Now, I'm not saying everyone from New Jersey is a psychopath. All I'm saying is that there's an alarming trend. In 2018, Reed Herjo created a GoFundMe for his dog, Atlas. The description read, Atlas is a 15-week-old German Shepherd puppy. Myself, Atlas, and a friend were in a severe hit-and-run accident when somebody ran a stop sign and hit the rear half of the car we were in. Atlas was asleep in the back seat when we were struck. So Atlas needed emergency surgery because some putts crashed into him. But thankfully, Reed was able to raise the funds for his dog. Another GoFundMe W. Nice job, team. Now, wherever you think this story's going, it's actually worse. According to the Medford Police Department, on January 22, 2018, a vehicle operated by Herjo was stopped by the Medford Township Police for speeding. At that time, Reed Herjo advised police that he was transporting his 14-week-old German Shepherd Atlas to the veterinary hospital. He said that while walking Atlas, he was struck by an ATV. Then a week later, police got an anonymous tip saying that Herjo was basically full of shit and had been abusing Atlas since he got him. The subsequent investigation conducted by the Medford Township determined that Reed Herjo intentionally caused injuries to Atlas. The injuries were severe and consisted of numerous fractures requiring surgical repair as well as hemorrhaging. It was also determined that in the short time, six weeks that Reed had Atlas, he sustained injuries on two additional occasions. Sadly, not long after that GoFundMe met its goal, Atlas would pass away under mysterious circumstances. But now the police were on his ass like cheese on a cracker. And on March 2018, he was charged with third degree animal cruelty and third degree theft by deception. What you're being accused of is despicable. Did you intentionally injure your dog so that you could raise money from a GoFundMe site? God damn, man. I, I don't say this often, but this Reed Herjo guy, he's, he's a real jerk. Madison Russo is a TikToker from Iowa who was diagnosed with stage 2 pancreatic cancer at just the age of 19. Her doctors told her she only had a few years left to live after discovering an inoperable tumor on her spine. People were really moved by this young woman and her bravery in fighting this terrible disease. And pretty soon her TikTok was blowing up. She was giving speeches, doing interviews, the news was running stories about her. 
But at the same time, her medical debt was piling up too. So Maddie decided to start a GoFundMe to try and cover some of her expenses. And it was a massive success, raising almost $40,000 in just a few weeks. But then people started looking a little bit deeper and they were noticing things were a little bit off about Madison. First of all, her medical equipment looked fake. She also constantly contradicted herself and said things that either made no sense or were flat out wrong. So far, I have completed eight rounds of chemo and over 50 rounds of radiation. I was informed that the tumor on my pancreas was shrinking and it was responding to treatment. However, it also spread to my blood and is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. There is a mental health crisis in America right now. So after getting multiple tips, the police started investigating her. They subpoenaed her medical records and it turns out, bitch never had cancer. But justice prevailed. She was charged with first degree theft and is currently awaiting trial. And the wildest thing about this is that she's just one in a long line of cancer fakers on GoFund. If I made an entire video just about these cancer faking schmucks, it would probably be like six hours long. There are only three things I really hate in this life. My ex-wife, Franklin the Turtle, and racists. That's why this story really shook me to my core. One morning, David Johnson was sound asleep in his Ohio home when he hears a pounding at his front door. It was his neighbor telling him that his pickup truck and motorcycle were on fire. The fire department quickly came and put the fires out. But then David noticed something even more horrendous. On his garage was spray painted in huge letters the words, n-word lover and the n does not stand for nipple david was shocked and appalled how could somebody do something so horrible the whole neighborhood got together and started a gofundme for david and his family who are pictured here and uh no offense bro but who were they accusing you of loving because this is the whitest family i've ever seen like you guys were probably expecting david to have a black wife or something weren't you the gofundme description read this morning between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m somebody set a fire to a family work vehicle and motorcycle also vandalized the garage with spray paint. The family doesn't have the money to fix anything. I am asking this to help out this wonderful family in a time of need. The kids won't be able to have anything under the Christmas tree due to this horrendous act. Please find it in your heart to donate. Yeah, anyways, turns out we have a Jesse Smollett situation on our hands because uh, David just woke up one morning and decided to be a complete lunatic for no reason. So he set his own vehicles on fire and spray painted a racial slur on his garage. His wife posted on Facebook, yesterday, Tuesday morning, David confessed to spray painting our garage door and starting the fire at our home on Monday, December 12th. David is currently at a mental health facility and will be arrested upon his release. There are a few professions out there that seem to attract the worst kinds of people. Right at the top of that list is local radio DJ, which is right above used car salesman and YouTuber. JG Spooner worked as a host for the radio show 92.3 The Fan in Cleveland, Ohio. But when he wasn't on the air, Spooner was moonlighting as a sociopathic scumbag. In February of 2015, Spooner came across the GoFundMe of a childhood friend of his named Allison. The campaign had only raised a measly $700, so JG, being the philanthropist that he was, offered to use his name to boost the campaign. Allison agreed and Spooner took control of the GoFundMe, which brought in over $7,000 in about a week. But the thing is, Allison never saw any of that money, and when she reached out to JG about why she wasn't getting any of it, he blamed it on GoFundMe. But after a few months of back and forth, Allison's family eventually called the police, who found out that Spooner had been funneling money directly into his own bank account. So Spooner was arrested on July of 2015 and charged with money laundering and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. And it gets even worse, because while he was out on bail, this mother sucker just could not help himself. And he ran another scam on Craigslist where he tried to rent out a home that wasn't even his. After getting about $8,500 worth of deposits from six different people, he ghosted all of them. And again, all of this was going on while he was on bail for scamming people. During his trial, JG was up there crying like a bitch. You would think he was Kyle Rittenhouse, but no one was buying it. The prosecutor called him a heartless con man. I don't think anyone knew that he was a heartless con man. The judge also called him disturbing, disgusting, and absolutely reprehensible. Disturbing, absolutely disgusting, and totally reprehensible. He was sentenced to 30 months in prison. Unfortunately for Allison, the woman he scammed, uh, she wouldn't live to see this putz get sentenced because she passed away while he was on trial. 